Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's first video of the verification for the summer 2020 forecast for this video. So uh, we shall have a review of the summer forecast at release at Gaz Office at the end of May uh, this year. And uh, we'll see what happened in terms of the anomalies. Have a look at the anomaly maps from the uh, UK Met Office to see how this summer turned out, how the forecast did. Uh, to say that coming up later on, you have Jeremy Friday, which is your month ahead look here with Japanese and South Fest Beach Mars. And they'll have a 10 to 14 day video update as well. After 10 o'clock tonight, we're going to be live streaming. We'll have a live stream uh, where we'll see how we're all doing. And I think we'll have a bit of a laugh tonight uh, on this Friday evening. Had to have a little drop of gas with his magic water, I suppose, and sort of perk myself up, won't I? But we're coming up at 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, right, so uh, as I say, at the at the end of uh, May, uh, we release the Gals of his uh, summer 2020 forecast. The forecast was for a warmer and drier than average uh, summer. So we thought that uh, we would see the temperature normally around 1 to 2 degrees above average. There was a possibility of a very excessively hot summer, although we did not forecast that. But we did go for an above average temperature for this summer, set against the 81 to 2010 average. And uh, rather on the dry and average side as well, although we did expect a lot of variation due to the fact that a warm summer was expected with, with a lot of uh, thunder, probably. Uh, so we thought there will be quite a bit of variation through the summer. But overall, averaging out warmer and dry and average. A, the chance of a hot August also was in the mix. Uh, we could definitely see there was a chance of a hot August, maybe the first 18 Celsius CT August since 2004. Ring. And uh, that was one of the sort of uh, bolder uh, elements of the summer forecast. Well, let's see how we actually did then. So uh, here we go. We also expected all three summer months to be warmer than average. with an equal chance of July and August to be above average. Uh, but anyway, this is how the temperature anomaly uh, looks for the summer of 2020. So actually, it wasn't as hot as we anticipated, uh, really. Now, now this is eighty-one twenty ten. 2010. So I could sort of cheat this if I wanted to, I suppose, and, and go with 61 to 90. And if I did that, then the forecast would probably be correct, uh, particularly, for, particularly so for England and Wales. However, we discarded uh, using 61 to 90, 90 averages uh, a year or so back. So I have to show you 81 to 2010 because that is the uh, anomaly period that we are setting our forecast against. Against that period, it wasn't as hot. Warmest areas were in the far southeast of England, where we came out at around a degree to a degree and a half above average. Central southern England were kind of like half a degree to one degree above average. Most other parts of the UK, including South England, Wales, Northern England, Northern Ireland and Scotland, coming out pretty much about average. So in terms of the temperature anomaly, it was not as hot a summer as we anticipated. And it was also significantly more unsettled through this summer as well. So this is a rainfall anomaly set against 81 to 2010. So the extreme southeast of England did get away with a dry of an average summer. And also the far north of Scotland uh, got away with a dry of an average summer. But elsewhere, the summer of 2020 was actually rather on the wetter than average side. You notice there is a lot of variation uh, with that. So some areas are in these very deep blue colours. Some areas are in much lighter blue colours. And not all that far away from one another. That is indicative of a very thundery summer, I think, with quite a bit of uneven rainfall. I think the rainfall was uneven, rather than being, you know, sort of Atlantic-driven, westerly, weatherfront-based, uh, where, where the distribution would be more even, and particularly, say, for more northern and western areas. Here, we see, uh, you know, quite a lot of variation over quite limited areas. So it was quite a thundery summer, I think, this and uh and and so so hit and miss showers but where where places that did get a lot of heavy showers and thunderstorms come away with really quite a wet summer but overall it is a wet and average summer which is not what we forecast we did not forecast a wetter than average summer so so this summer came out uh both cooler and also uh wetter than the guys of its summer forecast now some elements of the forecast did go okay so let's come to the temperatures uh, on a month by month basis. So that, of course, is for the summer. If we do this month by month, we can see that June came out quite widely uh, a little bit warmer than average across most parts of the country. And we also had August, uh, which came out again above average, especially so more southern southeast parts of the country. For quite a while, it did look as though August 
could actually be about 18 Celsius CT uh, month, uh, first one since 2003, but, but we thought was a possibility. So you remember that like the first 10 days of August in particular were very, very hot uh, indeed. We certainly had our hottest August spell since uh, since 2003. But that was offset by a much cooler uh, last week of the month. And so we finish up just actually slightly above average, away from the southeast, where it is a little bit more significantly above average. However, I think that we did correct pick up and identify uh, that, that August likely to be uh, quite a hotter month than we've had for some time, uh, quite a few years. So I was quite pleased with how that side of the forecast went, uh, and was probably quite unlucky with how cool it got in the last week. If it hadn't got quite as cool as it did last week of the month, then I think we would probably have just about managed to scrape an 18 Celsius uh, CT August. So I, I think that side of the forecast went a little bit better, but uh, of course July did the damage, because July actually came out with average to below average temperatures across most parts of the country, particularly in the north and the west. Uh, so, so that's what does the damage uh, with this summer. And the reason that the summer overall was not as uh, warm as we expected is because July actually comes out as a cooler than average month uh, across many parts of the country away from the southeast and only only average uh, there. So so that's what does the damage, and that's why the summer overall wasn't as hot as we expected. But it did have some very hot spell. It had a very hot spell at the end of June, and, it, and like the last day of July, we know, got very, very hot indeed in, on the last day of July. And then the first 10 days of August uh, gave us our hottest uh, spell of August weather since 2003. Precipitation-wise, on a month-by-month -month basis, let's just look at that before we wrap up. Uh, before we wrap this up. So June was quite an unsettled month. Again, the precipitation side of the forecast did not go uh, very well at all. June was wet and average for many northwestern areas. The driest weather was in the southeast, but even there, only one or two areas a little bit drier than average. Generally quite an unsettled uh, June. July, uh, north-south split. So wet and average in the north, driving average down in the south, but again, probably more unsettled than we expected for some forecast. Then August actually goes uh, wet and average. A lot of that is down to when the heat wave breaks down. Uh, a lot of that is down to when the heat wave breaks, and we uh, set up some really severe thunderstorms uh, as the heat wave breaks, like uh, around the middle part of the month. Around the 10th to the 15th, I think it was. Significantly dry on average August across the northern Scotland, interestingly. A little bit dry on average across the southeast and parts of England. I think with this uh, summer forecast, we have to say but it was a miss. I don't think we can say that, uh, that it was a hit with this. Although one or two elements did go... Okay, weren't too bad, particularly notably so that hot spell that we got early on in August. Actually, let's just uh, let's just move this over because that's lagging a little bit. So let's do that again. So that should be a little bit better. Uh, okay, so um, yes, I think that uh, we have to say this is this is a miss. This forecast is not a hit. Uh, although one or two elements did go a little bit better, particularly most notably so. Uh, the hot weather that we had in the first half of August. I think overall it was a cooler summer, particularly in July, cooler summer, and also a more unsettled summer than we anticipated. So there is nothing more, really, that I can do even say that this was not a successful forecast. We had a very, very good forecast with our spring forecast. You can touch my back to spring. That was a, that was a really good uh, forecast. I'm very happy with spring spring forecast i am very i'm not very unhappy with this forecast but i'm not happy with it. it it wasn't anywhere near as hot or as dry as we anticipated one thing we did pick up on though was was the developing landing and we always said that if the landing had began to develop more quickly than expected remember at the end of the spring it looked like it's going to be a very slow movement into a very weak landing year what actually happened is that the landing year accelerated uh the, the development of the landing year uh, accelerated and also got stronger uh, than anticipated. So now we're hovering around moderate landing year levels, uh, I think, particularly in the eastern extra Pacific. I always said that if that happened, then the summer forecast was going to be in trouble because we know there is this connection between uh, a rapid sort of um, a, a rapid uh, transition to quite a strong landing year and a poor summer. So so I'm, I'm actually a little bit surprised that the summer was as good as it was, actually. I'm surprised that we managed to pull off that very hot spell in the 
the first half of August, because given the way La Nina was going, uh, you know, they, they very could have easily could have ended up like a really cool and wet summer, like a 2007 or a 2012 this. So the hot weather that we did get uh, with this song is probably very lucky with it to get it, uh, if you like that sort of thing, which a lot of people don't, of course. But if you do, it's probably quite lucky to get that, given the broader, quick transition into a uh, rather stronger than anticipated La Nina. But I can't chalk this up, this forecast up to anything other than uh, a failure. So yes, uh, this one has not gone to plan. It wasn't as hot, it was as dry as we expected. And there we go. Whichever way it goes, you know that with Gals Weathers, you're always going to get the truth. We're always going to be honest. We're never going to try and, uh, you know, we're never going to try and cherry pick. We're never going to try and spin the forecast in, in, in a more... Um, you know, in a more satisfactory direction than they deserve to be spun. We will tell it like it is, good or bad. I was able to say that the spring forecast was a very good forecast, but with this one, I have to say it wasn't as good. I'm very sorry about that, and you know, we're pushing the boundaries with our uh, long-range forecast. Any forecast beyond a few days is fraught with health warnings. We're doing it for fun, really, and to try and advance the science of long-range forecasting, but we are at the very, very edges of what is possible sometimes the methodology works sometimes the methodology doesn't and uh, on and on this occasion the methodology did not work we shall try and endeavor to do better next time but either way you will always get get the truth from gazwebits we will never give you fake weather news we will never try and spin things in any uh, any particular direction uh, you know, we will just we will just tell it like it is. I always always have done. Always thought it's very important to do that. I think that hopefully is why we have quite a good reputation. I think Gaz Webb has a good reputation online because you know that whatever happens, I am going to tell you the truth. I'm never going to try and sugarcoat things. I'm never going to try and spin things. I'm never going to try and keep your fake news. Uh, it, I tell it like it is, and hopefully, hopefully, people appreciate that even when the forecast goes wrong, as it did this time. So uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, closing the door on the summer of 2020. Let me know in the comments what you think. What did you think to the summer of 2020? How was the summer of 2020? Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. This closes the door on the summer of 2020, as I say. And, uh, of course, we release the autumn forecast at the end of August. So uh, we will be verifying that at the beginning of December. We are now on to winter updates. The long-range bandwagon has rolled on again. And... Uh, we're well into the start, anyway, of the winter updates. Third winter update, part one, will be coming up on Sunday with part two on Monday. So, yeah, we never stop at Gals Weathers. Even when the forecast goes goes wrong, we just keep the bandwagon rolling. And uh, and, and that's how it is at Gals Weathers. Right, so this does close the door on the summer of 2020. Let me know in the comments what you think to this summer. We're going to be back later on with JMA Friday. That's your monthly book again. And we'll have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days. We'll give you a live stream tonight at uh, 10 o'clock. So uh, I'll have some of the gas weather it's magic water and I should see you then. For this verification of the summer of 2020 forecast, that's all for now though and thanks for watching.